Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Nearly 5,000 acres of the Beltrami Island State Forest are scorched from a fire that's been burning since Wednesday. Evacuations were underway when we first learned of the blaze. Now, it's mostly under control, all thanks to the effort of over 100 firefighters and a dozen agencies and several National Guard Blackhawk helicopters. Valley News Team's Brad Frederick takes us now to that burn zone. I'm here at the Incident Command Post in War Road. It's at the DNR office in town. We're just about ready to head out to the fire, but before we go, they had to give me some special equipment. Flame-resistant shirt, flame-resistant pants, gloves, and a hard hat. Let's go. About 12 miles straight south of town brings you to the forest. And as Jeff Edmonds as my guide, we began seeing scorched ground and trees as crews put out hotspots. And so we're reinforcing fire lines that have been put in mostly on that very first night with, with bulldozers. The heavy equipment came in and plowed everything down to the dirt so the fire would stop. Think of Beltrami Island State Forest as a state-owned tree farm. They plant them, sell the rights to logging companies who harvest the lumber, and then the trees are replanted. Some burned areas of timber were just sold. And these trees here are not mature. They were not intended to be harvested for another 40 years, maybe. So we are so deep in this forest that we got stuck in a mud hole, and now we have to hike out to uh, get out of the fire zone. We weren't in danger from the fire. It's just in small pockets spread across the 4,700 acres. We were mostly in danger from the burned out trees falling on us due to the screaming winds. We had to hoof it at least two miles before we could find someone to help. Edmund says it's sad to see so much hard work go into a forest like this. The trees are planted in nice straight rows. But he says fire can sometimes be good for the ecosystem. In War Road, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Crews say it's rare to see a fire of this size this early in the year. And they say there's actually still frost underground if you dig several inches. And if this fire had happened two weeks from now, it could have been much worse. And there's another factor to talk about tonight with regard to the fire, something that's been playing a major role in all recent grass fires. Let's head over to Hutch Johnson to get the very latest. Hutch? Well, that has been the wind, and it's been no stranger to our region. This spring, in fact, this week, we've had dust blowing around. We've had, well, wind-fed fires blowing around. Even into the evening hour, hours tonight, 5 to 15 mile-per-hour winds continue from the north. And we are expecting the winds to continue and pick up tomorrow, and here is why. A storm system, which is brewing in the central Rockies, will move north into the northern plains. As it does so, the wind will increase from the south southeast. Now, it will not be as strong as the 50-mile-per-hour gusts we saw earlier in the week, but the rain and the wind will also combine to produce some tricky firefighting uh, conditions. So Saturday, warm, windy and dry, another high fire danger day, but relief is in sight. I'll have details on exactly how much rain we're expecting here in a few minutes. Mike, we look forward to that. Thanks. Now rain isn't the forecast that many of us generally like, but right now it is badly yeah. needed for farmers in the whole region. And what a difference a year makes. Farmers say last year they had to battle the wet conditions to save their crops. A different story now. Farmers hoping for an inch or more to help the seeds grow. And as Valley News Team's Macy Inger found out this weekend, we'll determine how the rest of the season goes. Hello. Hello. The Clemenson family is happy to chat about the dry weather. Even though it's great to be outside, the last thing on their minds is yard work. You don't see these kind of temperatures and this kind of sunshine and being out until really, I mean, if we're honest, June. So I don't mind letting us see brown and not see green until then. They don't plan to water the yard any earlier than normal, which helps the pocketbook. And most of their neighbors have followed suit. I haven't seen other folks in the neighborhood having systems turned on or folks bringing out their own little sprinkler system. Homeowners aren't the only ones that have to deal with these dry conditions. Farmers say if this weather keeps up, it could put them behind. We might have to replant some stuff and it, uh, it's kind of dependent on what nature does for us right now. Rain is in the forecast and the magic number for the Craigness farm is about a half an inch. That way, crops already planted can germinate and the dirt can stay put rather than blow around and lose nutrients. The same challenge as all the big acreage corn and soybeans farms are having with, you know, we 
can get the seeds in the ground, but if they don't start, then we're not really started yet. Water is coming from a series of hoses running along the field, and they'll be used until Mother Nature lends a hand. If it doesn't rain on Sunday, then we just carry on the plan till the next time we hope it rains. Crossing their fingers that that comes sooner rather than later. Northam Moorhead, Macy Inger, Valley News Live. An NDSU expert says the valley's soil is in good shape for farming and needs only about a half inch to help settle the dust and help with planting. But the north and southwest portions of North Dakota are actually too wet. Well, state lawmakers had hoped to get their work done this session by next Friday, but they were throwing a curveball today. Some say there's no way they'll be finished by then. Typically, new bills aren't able to be brought up this late in the game, but this one was submitted as delayed, and if passed, it could restructure the oil tax formula. Republicans say the bill will create a safety net for the state's oil revenues should the larger trigger come into play, but the minority party says it will actually have grave consequences. What was proposed today was a whopping 30% permanent cut to the oil extraction tax. Uh, that is going to cost North Dakota tens of billions of dollars in the coming decades. However, the majority leader in the House says that's not the case, and there's still time to hear this piece of legislation. There is no right or wrong time for this. We, uh, it has no fiscal effect on this biennium. That we're, we're not changing one thing in our budgets because we have a supposed trigger in place. This is about the future of the state and the oil industry, and that's what we're addressing today. The bill will be heard Monday in a joint finance and tax committee hearing. Students for Life are calling the Fargo School District's response we reported on yesterday as amateurish and inaccurate. In their response, the Fargo School District seemed to be willing to allow pro-life groups in the school as long as they complete the required paperwork, which the group had previously failed to do. That's after the district told students several weeks ago that they would not be allowed to form the groups because they were considered outside agencies. Students for Life America say they believe as the end of the year approaches, the school district is trying to push this issue under the rug for a few more months. But Fargo School says it's convening a task force to review its policies on and associated with student clubs and groups, and it will be completed by this fall. Now, if you'd like to read this full story, we have it online for you. Just head to valleynewslive.com and search this story. It's more common than we think for some people to live in storage units. That's according to a local homeless shelter. Just this morning, a woman was rescued from a storage unit in North Fargo. The woman was living at Bison's storage units on 14th Avenue North temporarily and got stuck inside. Fargo police say the woman was taken to the hospital for hypothermia and had to be checked over Fargo police say it is illegal for storage companies to rent out units for people to live in, and the woman was breaking her lease. Moorhead and West Fargo also have ordinances against living in storage units. It's Friday. Time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say Tyler Brady is wanted for marijuana delivery near a school. That's a felony. Brady has set up a court date for Friday, May 1st, but the warrant stays active until that appearance. And if you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, here's some advice. Call our whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. 701-237-6576. Call that number and leave your tip. Valley News Live, 10 at 10, continues with No Wait Weather. A, a pretty fabulous Friday yeah, to yes, wrap off yes. the week. Yeah, we've been battling wind. We've been battling yeah. some pretty tough conditions out there. Yeah. Relief for farm fields, relief for firefighters, yeah. and all of us as we're waiting for that green of spring. Uh, and I'm anxious for the rain. Yes, and I definitely. think a lot of us are. And taking a look at the forecast, it's looking pretty good. This evening, the conditions quite quiet. North-northeast winds are blowing at 12 miles per hour. It's 58 degrees and your relative humidity, a very dry 20%. 57 in Wadena, it's 41 in Roseau, 45 for Grand Forks, and flip those numbers around, 54 in Valley City this hour. Take a look at our tower cam time lapse as we enjoyed beautiful colors in the skies. Now, with all of the wind and fires, it's kicking up dust, and there's all kinds of smoke in the air, so the colorful skies are even more colorful, bouncing those 
colors from the white light of the sun through our lower atmosphere. Hey, a real quiet evening once that wind settled down this evening, and it looks like that's going to continue for the rest of our sleeping hours as the radar shows absolutely nothing here in the northern plains. Some rainfall making its way all the way to northern Nebraska now as a low pressure system that's been bringing snowfall and heavy snowfall to the mountains of Colorado is now working its way to the or slowly to the north and east. Some heavy bands of rain already setting up. And right now, this system is just very slowly moving as it's cut off from that jet stream flow, which is way up north in Canada. It's going to get a little boost or a kick, and when it kicks out into the northern plains, our chance of rain will increase dramatically heading through the weekend. And this storm system, a lot of moisture with it as these south winds out ahead of the storm starting to draw on air from the Gulf of Mexico, bring it all the way up into portions of Nebraska and South Dakota already. It's on its way to our neck of the woods and your hour by hour forecast shows. Overnight by 7 o'clock in the morning, we remain clear, quiet, and with the very dry air, we'll cool off substantially. 35 to 40 degrees across the region to start our weekend. Now, in the mid-morning hours, here come the clouds to our southern counties as temperatures climb into the 60s for almost everyone. And by the afternoon, we'll be in the 60s everywhere and even 70s in the southern Red River Valley for a repeat performance. The wind direction from the south-southeast tomorrow will begin to get gustier later in the day, especially in our southernmost counties. So for firefighters up to the north, it looks like another day to battle, and that fire danger will remain quite high across a wide spectrum of the region. Heading into the nighttime hours when our best chance of showers and even a rumble of thunder could make their way into the area. Ellendale, down towards Aberdeen, Lisbon, and even out towards Hankinson, a chance for some 10 o'clock showers. Those chances increase as we go through Saturday night. Oh, when we head to bed, watch this. This moisture wraps its way through the Red River Valley and makes its way into western Minnesota and taking aim on the area where the fires have been such a problem. And many of us will get a good chance of some soaking showers. By Sunday mid-morning, it's out of here, but the gusty northwest winds come in and take a look at this. Late in the day, a chance for some of the rain to mix with or change over to snow into our northernmost counties. A decent chance at some half inch to one inch rainfall totals right through the Red River Valley with drier conditions the farther north and west that you go through the region. Fargo's planter tonight dropping into the 40s, even upper 30s possible briefly. And then going through our day, temperatures will be arising into the 70s and Fargo once again with winds gusting to 25 miles per hour. Looks like 60s for most of our northern county neighbors along Highway 2 and points north 71 for the Wapaton area. Take a look at Tracy's gorgeous shot again. Second night in a row of some Aurora Borealis. Well, at least we've had something very colorful in the sky to look at. It does look like we're going to see some significant wet and windy weather on Sunday and cooler weather next week. Okay, I just... want to tell you about a house fire that crews are responding to mm -hmm. north of Moorhead. It's happening in Clay County. The address is 2284 100th Avenue North, reported as a house fire. We have a crew on the scene as well. We'll keep you posted not only here but on valleynewslive.com. Still to come, sick of paying for all those cable channels you don't watch? Well, the deal Verizon is rolling out. We'll tell you. But first, how social media may be playing a role in the self-esteem of our youth. You're watching.